Mr. Speaker. I rise to speak in opposition to Senate Bill 34, and I ask permission to speak also about 35 as well. So ordered. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, as we know, uh, these two bills together eliminate the local gun boards that currently have the responsibility for granting concealed pistol licenses to citizens who apply. And when these laws were set up many years ago, um, they were set up and designed to make sure that everybody who wanted to get a concealed pistol license in the state of Michigan could get that license as long as they weren't a violent criminal or mentally ill. And we set up the local gun boards as a check to make sure that the individuals who are applying for a CPL were not criminally violent or mentally ill. And in this bill, we're really taking away that check and balance. We're taking away that local control. And in its place, we're putting the Michigan State Police. Now, um, I don't know why we would want to give more power to the state government and take power away from our local officials, uh, but I do know why our local officials were performing some valuable work at these gun boards. And that's because, for instance, with these two items, uh, the way that we attempt to keep guns out of the hands of the mentally ill is that we simply ask them on the application, are you mentally ill? And that's not a very strong check on that particular public policy goal that this legislature set up. In fact, it was a real benefit to have local law enforcement individuals and local prosecutors who know their local community see these applications come across their desk and attempt to assuage and determine whether or not these individuals might have a mental illness that wasn't disclosed in the application or might have a mental illness that didn't rise to the level of an involuntary commitment. By changing this process so that really we're just relying upon a document search at the Michigan State Police, uh, we're only going to be catching and denying applications of people who've been involuntarily committed. And we're losing the opportunity to get that local check on folks who have a, a demonstrated and well-known mental illness but uh, didn't self-report. Uh, the other goal of the legislature long ago when they set up our shall issue policy in Michigan was to keep guns out of the hands of violent criminals. And um, I would submit to my members that, uh, and my colleagues that there are individuals who are criminally violent and who have a history of violence in their community but do not have a criminal record that's going to show up at a document search at the Michigan State Police. So once again, we're missing an opportunity to keep guns out of the hands of violent criminals by taking away this local check and balance. I would submit to you just one scenario. We have a lot of situations across the state of Michigan where uh, individuals are victims of domestic violence. And oftentimes, uh, local law enforcement is called out to the homes of individuals who are victims of domestic violence. Not every single one of those visits from the police uh, are, are accompanied with an official charge and an arrest and a conviction. And unfortunately, um, what we're going to be doing with this change is we're going to be taking away the opportunity of local officials to apply that local knowledge to deny applications of people who have been visited by the police many, many times, but in cases where the victims... Members, if we could please have your attention. One of our colleagues is trying to address this on the issue before us. Members, if we could please have your attention. The chair recognizes Representative Irwin. Well, uh, Mr. Chair, I, I, I regret to uh, say after you've just uh, gotten the attention of the body that I was just wrapping up. So let me just say uh, uh, that uh, I think it's a mistake to uh, give up on this opportunity for some local checks and balances. We currently were uh, only engaging in discretionary denials in a couple counties, and we're talking about maybe a couple hundred people a year out of many thousands who are being denied on the basis of local law enforcement's concerns about the, those individuals being mentally ill or criminally violent, and, and that's a mistake for us to give up on that very, very small check in our concealed weapons policies. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The clerk will tally, display, and announce the vote. Mr. Speaker, on the question of final passage on Senate Bill 3-4, there are 76 aye votes and 34 nay votes. A majority of members elected and serving having voted therefore, the bill is passed.